Hi everybody, today we're going to talk about absolute value inequalities. First, we're going to review some things you should already know about absolute value inequalities. If you haven't seen these before, or if you don't really remember these, I encourage you to check out some of the review videos that are in the review video links. Um, this isn't meant to be an introduction. Like I said, it is a review. And then we're going to go over some examples that you might not have seen that are some special cases. Okay, so first of all, let's just do some review examples. Okay, so for our first example, we're just going to get started with some easier ones. Okay, so you guys can really remember how this works. Okay, so first we're going to graph our solutions on the number line, then we're going to write them as either a compound inequality or as two inequalities, and then we are going to write them in interval notation. Okay, so first Okay, so we're looking for numbers whose absolute value is less than 3. So remember, the absolute value is the distance between 0 and that number. So if we're looking for numbers who are less than 3 units away from 0, we might go this direction and see that up to 3, okay, but not including 3, our numbers fulfill that. Okay, but remember, absolute value doesn't care about direction, so we could also go left right, up to three units, and see that those numbers also fulfill this, okay? If you don't believe me, you can check, for example, one, absolute value is one, that is less than three, negative two, absolute value is positive two, that's less than three, okay? So here's our number. Now we wanna express that as an inequality, okay? So our left endpoint is gonna be negative three, okay, is less than x, which is less than three. Okay, we can see these numbers are between negative three and three, and because it's all one big piece, you can use a compound inequality. Okay, it's called compound because it has these two inequalities. X is greater than negative three, X is less than positive three. Okay, and now we're gonna write this as an interval. Again, my left endpoint is negative three. You always wanna put the smaller number on the left. My right endpoint is positive three, okay? And because this is strictly less than and these points are not included, I'm gonna use parentheses. Okay, so let's look at the other type of inequality which is greater than, okay? Okay, and we'll also throw in an or equal to. Okay, so first we wanna graph this on the number line. Five, okay, and we'll extend our number line a little bit. Okay, so we're looking for numbers whose distance from zero right, is greater than four. So we're gonna to go to four, one, two, three, four, here we are, okay, and we wanna be further away than this. So we're gonna start here at this point, including four because of or equal to, and we're gonna go further away from zero. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing in the other direction, one, two, three, four. So we're gonna start here, okay, including this point whose distance is exactly equal to four, okay, and then we're gonna go further away. Okay, now you can see this is different than the last example because there's these two separate pieces. Okay, so because we have these two separate pieces, we're gonna need two inequalities. Okay, so if we're just describing this piece, these are the numbers that are less than negative four. Okay, 
And if we're just describing these numbers, these are the numbers that are greater than positive 4. Okay, so because we have these two separate pieces, we have these two different inequalities. You can't force these to be a compound inequality, okay, so please don't use that notation, it's incorrect. All right, now the next thing we're going to do is write this as an interval, okay, so one interval for this left component. Okay, and remember we are going to include negative 4 using a bracket. Okay, and then this part over here, we're going to start by including 4 and going off to infinity. Okay, now remember when you're joining together two intervals, you need to use the union. Okay, so there's a quick review of the two different types of inequalities. Okay, so let's look at an example where you need to do some solving. Okay. Okay, so we're going to start with this, okay? Now, if the absolute value is less than 5, remember we're imagining this image of the number line, okay, where the numbers are in between here. Okay, so we would say that number, okay, is between negative 5 and 5. So it's between negative 5 and 5. Okay, because we're imagining this part of the number line. Okay, now we need to solve for x. So a quick reminder of how to solve compound inequalities. We're going to subtract 3 everywhere. Okay, and now we need to get rid of this negative sign. So we're going to divide everything by negative 1. And I wanted to remind you that when you either multiply or divide by a negative number, you need to switch the direction of the inequality symbols. Okay, so our final answer is that x is between negative 2 and 8. Okay, so for our interval notation, Remember, the left endpoint has to be the smaller number, so that'll be negative 2, and our right endpoint is the larger number, okay? And because we don't have or equal to, we're not going to include them, we're going to use parentheses, okay? So a quick little review of how to set those problems up, okay? Let's do one more example that's a review type. Okay. Okay. So the first thing we want to do when you have other things is you want to isolate the absolute value. So we're going to subtract 2. Okay, and then we're going to divide by 3. Okay. Now we have that the absolute value is larger than 1. So again, we're imagining the number line. Okay, and we're imagining the numbers whose distance is greater than 1. So that's these numbers here and these numbers here. Okay. So we would say this number is either here, less than or equal to negative 1, okay, or those numbers are here, then that number is greater than or equal to positive 1. 
Okay. And now I'm going to finish solving these. So I'm going to subtract one. I'm going to subtract one here also. Okay. And then I'm going to divide by negative one. And remember, you're going to switch the direction of the inequality. Okay. All right. So x is greater than two. Okay, it might help you to visualize the number line again. Okay, so x is greater than 2. So here's 2. Okay, x is less than or equal to 0. Okay, so when I go to write my interval, I have these two parts. and I'm going to combine them with the union, okay? And I'm going to remind you that it is important that you have this interval on the right and this interval on the left, okay? Because you want the smaller numbers left and the larger numbers right, just like they are on the number line, okay? All right, so let's look at some special cases of this that we may not have seen before. Okay, so for these special cases, you'll see that it says, write your answer in interval notation if possible. Okay, so let's see when that might not be possible. Okay, so first, we're gonna look at this example and say, okay, this is the distance between this number and zero. So can the distance between a number and zero be less than zero? No. And you guys know that the absolute value is always non-negative. So it's not possible for x plus five to be less than zero. Is it possible for the absolute value to be exactly equal to zero? Yes, okay? So it's not possible for x plus five absolute value to be less than zero, okay? We know this, absolute value is a distance, it can't be negative, okay? So the only possibility is that the absolute value of x plus five is equal to zero. Okay, now the only number with absolute value zero is zero itself, okay, which would tell you your only solution is x equals negative five, okay? Now when you have a single value like this, you can't write it in interval notation, so this would be my final answer, okay? Now again, you're only getting this one solution because when it says less than or equal to zero, it can't be less than zero. The only possibility is exactly equal to zero. Okay, let's see another unusual example. Okay, so this says absolute value is greater than or equal to zero. So when is the absolute value greater than or equal to zero? Well, always, okay? So no matter what you plug in for x, and if you don't believe me, you can try some different values for x, no matter what happens here, you will always have that the absolute value is greater than or equal to zero, okay? So this is true for all values of x. Okay? So how do you write that as an interval? 
just negative infinity to infinity. Okay. All right. So let's look at a couple other special cases. So the absolute value is less than zero. When can that happen? Remember, absolute value is a distance. It can't be less than zero. You can't have a negative distance. So this is false for all values of x. OK, so what does that mean? That means there are no solutions to this. OK, any value of x you plug in here, you're going to take the absolute value, you'll either get zero or you'll get a positive number. You can't get something less than zero. So there's no solutions to this equation. And let's look at the last special case involving zero. Okay. So now you want that the absolute value is greater than zero. Well, the absolute value is almost always greater than zero, right? We know that it's always greater than or equal to zero. So the only case where this is not greater than zero is if this number is exactly zero. So you don't want 4x minus 3 to be zero because then you would have zero here. Absolute value would be zero. It wouldn't be greater than itself. OK, any other number you plug in here, you're going to get a number here. Take the absolute value. You'll get something positive. So that would be greater than zero. OK, so what you don't want. OK, is X cannot be three fourths. OK, so this is the only value that if you plug it in here, you'll get a false statement. OK, and as an interval you leave that one point out by doing up to that point and then you start over at that point leaving it out okay all right so those are our special cases involving zero let's look at a couple other special cases Okay, so we have 3x minus 1 is greater than or equal to negative 2. Okay, so the absolute value, remember, is always a non-negative value. It's either 0 or it's positive. So when you take the absolute value, when is it greater than or equal to negative 2? Well, always, right? This is always 0 or positive. So that's always going to be greater than or equal to negative 2. Okay, so this is always true. Okay, so our interval would be negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, all right, let's do one more example like this. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is isolate the absolute value by subtracting 5 from both sides. Okay. And now, when is the absolute value less than or equal to negative 2? Well, the absolute value is a positive or zero number. So when is that less than or equal to negative 2? Well, never. So this is never true. Okay which would tell us that we have no solution. Okay, so that would be our answer for this example. 
All right, I hope you are reminded of how to solve absolute value inequalities. Feel free to ask me any questions and I will see you guys soon.